Hello eye tracking community. My name is Michael and in this video we will talk about how the experiment will look like. So let's come now to the last step. You know now why you want to conduct an eye tracking experiment and which metrics you want to analyze. In this video we will talk now about the concrete steps of the eye tracking experiment. Basically, you can work with two different setups. The first one is that you control as many co-founding or dependent variables as you can. This means that you're doing a lab experiment or you're doing a more open experiment like in a real world scenario. From my experience, in both cases, it makes sense to work with several steps during the design process. And one tip for beginners, keep it as simple as possible. So please do not start with 50 participants, multi webcams, 30 or 50 stimuli, EEG and eye tracking. The probability is very high that you will be frustrated and that you don't get the data and the quality you want to get. In general, the basic procedure of an eye tracking experiment is the following. After being created, the participants fill out a questionnaire about their demographic data. And they also indicate whether they have knowledge in the field about the task. By filling out this questionnaire and analyzing the results, we can minimize the influence of co-founding variables in the experiment. Next, the participants perform an eye test. In my experiments, I've used a Snellen chart for testing the acuity of their vision and I've used the Ishihara color charts for testing um, the color vision. The third step, the participants get a short introduction to the task. This introduction should be given in writing form or as a video. And then they can ask any questions about the task at hand to the experimenter. And this ensures that all the participants perform their tasks with the same level of knowledge. Before the subject's eye movements are recorded, the eye tracking device has to be calibrated. And this can be done several times during the experiment. Then in the fifth step, the presentation of the stimuli begins and the participants perform their tasks. Several task blocks are performed in the experiment. The participants is given the possibility to have breaks in order to relax. And during these breaks, the participants can fill out questionnaires like the NASA task load index. And then the next task block begins with the same procedure as described in the fourth or fifth step. And finally, if necessary, the participants can fill out a final questionnaire at the end of the experiment and can get a compensation for their participation. From my experience and what I did during my studies, um, these are the important steps of an eye tracking experiment. Now let's talk about the restrictions due to the budget and the requirements. First, you should ask who should participate in your eye tracking experiment. So the question is here about the participant selection. In some user experiments, the participant is the independent variable. And this means that you want to analyze correlations between the eye movements and characteristics of the participants, such as gender, age and their experience in doing, in doing the task. So the next question which you should ask yourself is how should the stimuli look like? And please do not underestimate the time which you have to invest to create appropriate stimuli. These stimuli can be either static stimuli like images or photos. They can be dynamic like a video or a VR scene 
or a website. Last question. What kind of eye tracker system do you want to use to record the eye movements? You can choose between two different systems. The first one is a fixed eye tracker, sometimes also called desktop eye tracker. And the other one is a head mounted eye tracker, which allows the participants to move freely through their environment. Both systems have advantages and disadvantages. For a more detailed descriptions of these two different systems and how they are working, please have a look at one of our previous videos. So two things are now left. The first thing is, please do pilot studies before you run the real experiment. In a pilot study, you can test your equipment, your setup, your procedure with a small group of participants and you can do these pilot studies or run through through the pilot study several times until you reach a level where you say, okay, now I'm ready for the real experiment. And these pilot studies help you to avoid that something is going wrong with the real experiment later if you have invited all the 30, 50, 100 participants to your lab. So finally, let's talk about the most tricky part from my experience when conducting an eye tracking experiment or when designing an eye tracking experiment. It's the question, how much participants do you want to invite and how much stimuli do you want to use for your experiment? So let's assume due to your statistical methods, you need a certain amount of data points, let's say several thousand data points. Then you could say, okay, I invite now 30 participants. I will show them in three task blocks, 30 stimuli each. And if you multiply all these numbers, this will lead to 2,700 single data sets or scan paths, which you have to record during your eye tracking experiment. And when you're now measuring how much time you need for presenting these single stimuli, you will get the overall time for recording the eye movements. And then you have to add the introduction as well as when you're saying goodbye and farewell to your participants. And this is then the overall time for the whole experiment together with setting up and then with shutting down the, for example, eye tracking hardware. And it's not only about running these experiments, it's also analyzing these experiments. And to make a long story short, this was my motivation why I started to do research in the field, for, in the field of visual analytics for eye tracking to analyze this amount of data in a very efficient way. So here we are now at the end of this series of tutorials. From my experience in the last 13 years in eye tracking research, most times it's the best way to think the whole design process of an eye tracking experiment from the perspective of the end, from the analysis. So what difference do you want to find when you uh, conducting, when you are analyzing your eye movements? Which correlations do you want to find? And going from there backwards through the setup to the beginning in combination with the question, why do you want to conduct your eye tracking experiment, shows you the path to design a great eye tracking experiment, which hopefully will provide you a real good data quality for your work. Thank you very much for watching this video. This video is the third part of our series um, about why, what and how to conduct an eye tracking experiment. We will also publish all three videos in one video. If you like the video, please press the like button and share it with your community.